Hey, everybody. This is Dominic D'Angelo of adfreeshows.com. Today's date is May 23rd, 2023, but we are looking forward to May 26th, 2023, as we have Under Siege coming up, Impact Wrestling. And I am happy to have with me here the Impact World Champion. I think this is the first time I've ever interviewed a standing world champion as it goes. Is Mr. Steve Macklin. Steve, thank you for joining us today here on Ad Free Shows. No, thanks for having me. It's good to be on here to chat and uh, good to you for your Jets with getting Rodgers this offseason, huh? How about that? I'm cautiously optimistic. You know, uh, things are looking pretty good. I um, I like, uh, I think he's got a chip on his shoulder and I think he's looking to prove a little bit of something. So, um, <laughs> now yeah, I'm a Giants fan. So I have a bunch of friends that are Jets fans. So they're all excited. So uh, that's it's right. Good for New York. It's just good for New York sports. Well, I'll ask you real quick, what do you think of the Daniel uh, Jones re-signing and all that? I, I've loved Daniel since he's been there. He's worked his butt off. I know a lot of people had problems with him, but he can just he just moves well. He can be in the pocket. He can be out of the pocket. and just He needed weapons around him for so long, and I think they're building that around him. And yeah, Dable is such a great coach. I think they really know what they're doing up there, so I think they'll be able to, play, you know. And that, that NFC East, too, is wide open, I think, in my opinion. I mean, the Eagles are oh. tough, obviously, but... Yeah, as long as everybody beats Dallas, uh, that that's all that matters to me. I, I don't care. I'm, I'm a fan of every team in the league if they play Dallas. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> big time. Okay, well, uh, people have been a big time fan of you. You're the Impact World Champion. What has kind of changed for you uh, moving forward as a wrestler? Is there certain aspects that you've kind of altered a little bit now that you are the World Champion, or have you kind of just been like, I got to, I'm leading by example when I'm in the when I'm on the undercard and stuff, but, and now I'm just doing what I'm doing now. Uh, nothing's changed for me. It's still, uh, I treat it as if uh, it's my first day through the door uh, at impact wrestling. I try to work my butt off, uh, try to go out there and treat it as if it's my last match. And then I have to still prove myself even as the world champion. Now uh, that that's my job. And I think that's what was built in me from learning from uh, people that were higher on the card than me growing uh, just in this business in general, uh, people that I looked up to. And that's one thing that I've never Taking for granted was just I want to work hard and never change who I am. And uh, it's just uh, full speed ahead getting into Under Siege with PCO. And I'm looking forward to that match and uh, to get back to Canada and uh, the country that loves me so much up there. So, <laughs> Well, yeah, I got to ask you. I mean, he's Canadian. Uh, but t give me your thoughts on PCO and what he's kind of done. And he's kind of obviously he's like a master of reinvention, and it seems. So um, what is kind of your perspective on him as a wrestler, a talent, just in general? He's the perfect creation, and it's crazy to think of how long he's been in this business and the people that he's worked with. And uh, hopefully, he doesn't steal my jacket. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's just it's just crazy, and it's just cool to see a guy like him uh, in this business uh, flourish as he got older. And it, it, it's something you wouldn't think of back in the day. And it just it took so long for him to find this, and it just people are attracted to him uh, for the Frankenstein that he is. And I don't know what it is, but everywhere we go no matter what town we are in, they're chanting for PCO. And that's a good thing. That's an attest to his body of work. And uh, very much looking forward to this match. I've beaten him before. Uh, he is the perfect creation. I did break his back the other night. So that's whether we see him come to uh, under siege or not. So we'll have to find out. I mean, if anybody's going to be there, it's going to be the French Canadian Frankenstein, you know? So, what? Well, okay. Uh, I wanted to kind of get your perspective too. Obviously he's got the supernatural identity and things like that. Um, you know, there's classic, uh, characters like the undertaker and stuff like that what is kind of your thought process when it comes to characters like that in that formation being in wrestling and um is there some, if that was a pitch to you in a certain way to do a certain character like that do you think you would be able to pull it off uh i, I would try my hardest uh mm -hmm. I, again i've been in spots where i had to be a knight uh i've had to be uh, the forgotten son that we kind of had an idea of and molding it into what it was and we tried to make the best of it, and obviously that didn't work out. But uh, to do what he has done and mold into like this walking embodiment of what Frankenstein is and his image, uh, it, it's it's crazy to see and how he is behind the scenes and how he gets ready with makeup and just getting into character. And he really is just him too. That's the funny part. Is like once you do find your identity, you become you yourself in that personality. And uh, maybe one day I could have something like that. But for right now, I love who I am. I'm being able to show the world who I am of being Mr. Mayhem or Merc of Mayhem, people say. Uh, so it's just fun to, uh, yeah, maybe one day. But seeing what he does, it's pretty crazy and it's pretty cool because, you know, you have to still kind of keep that kayfabe element uh, from the old days of high, uh, don't pull the curtain back so much. But, um, yeah, just it's entertaining to me too on the, on the other side. 
Well, I think it what's really, really cool is how you kind of debuted a lot or like really made your like major mark starting off in impact. I just remember the vignette of you, you know, drinking, uh, you know, a shot of whiskey and stuff like that. And I think it was like Sinatra kind of playing in the background. It very much had like Tom Jane's uh, Punisher vibes in a lot of ways. Um, could, was that a lot of your uh, creation in a lot of ways of how to how to kind of cultivate that? And t- t- tell me about that a little bit. All my creation on that. I, I had the help of my wife being there to get my verbiage down, so it actually sound pretty, uh, uh, but coherent and uh, good, uh, good context to get out there for my vocabulary. But it was just good to have friends that were able to film. I had uh, my buddy Tanner and his buddy Brett. Uh, they used to work for NASCAR, and they're both in the VA. Uh, so I got linked up with Tanner that way, and I just said, "Hey, I want to do these vignettes. I really want to be professional about this. I don't know. I don't care what the cost is. I want to get this character and this image of who I am." and That's the one thing too, when I got let go, that was instantly, all right, cool, time to get to work. So I was just like, this is my idea. I want to put this out there. And even before I got to Impact, I even told uh, Deanna, I was like, I want to get these vignettes done. I want to get out in the indies and work on this character. And then luckily uh, when I got to with Impact Wrestling and chatted with them, with Scott Demore and D'Lo and Tommy, uh, creative and Jimmy Jacobs and Robert Evans, they loved the vignettes and like, Hey, we may reshoot these, but we're not sure. And then they told me, Hey, we're just going to use the vignettes. We're just going to put it out in a different order. I'm like, that's awesome. And it just, it let me kind of feel more, uh, accomplished in my own self of believing in myself and taking a chance to, uh, just put forth the effort and uh, showing who I want to be. And I know a lot of people like everybody keeps doing these cinematic things. I'm like, but that's what attracts me as a fan. So I'm going to do what I think attracts me. And hopefully that brings in people as well. Cause I love comic books. I love the character of the Punisher. I love the Captain America nomad version. And it's trying to gel the two and finding my own creation. So if anything compared to your previous question, like taking what he did as a Frankenstein character and making that larger than life, undertaker kane style here i am taking bits and pieces into finding who i am so i can turn the dial up a little bit that's great and um yeah i think that there's such a cool crossover in a lot of ways with comic books and pro wrestling obviously people you know there's the violence that goes with it but obviously it's like you're rooting for the good versus evil in a lot of ways um is what really kind of inspired you to get into comics that was it would did it start off as a kid and then you kind of developed a fandom more so or did you get on into it later on in life i loved comics growing up watching saturday morning cartoons with x-men ninja turtles yeah. just this there's there was no way of getting around it and it just i love just characters and then once the marvel movie started hitting like i grew up loving batman but then once that marvel like the cinematic universe started happening with Iron Man and they built this story for 10 years and then 15 years and it just keeps building. It's very much pro wrestling. And then that's where I like find the the very big comparison of the two is like, it's everything's a movie to me. So I just try to treat it that way. And I love how they can put ink, like little Easter eggs and certain things here. And I just saw guardians uh, two weeks ago, guardians three. And just to see the tie-ins to like the other movies and like the, to wrap up the stories of the trilogy. Like I'm trying to explain it to Diana because she never saw the other ones. So I'm just like, this happened here, this happened here. So that's why this is how, like, actually it's cool to me. And I love that when that happens in wrestling organically and like right. you put a lot of effort into the storytelling. And that's one good thing at Impact uh, is everybody's involved some way, kind of like the old Attitude Era where they'd be a full on show, but everybody ebbs and flows through each other's storylines. And that's what I love. I love when we can all work together and somehow we help each other grow or just it tells a story. And that's just the cool part of wrestling. Something I really love too that's great about comic books is like the the eye to continuity and like, hey, you can go back years and they're referencing something like years ago from a different writer in a different series or anything like that or different characters. And so when it's put into effect into pro wrestling, it's like, damn it. Okay, we get that. Maybe not everybody gets that. But if you've watched wrestling forever, you know that that's, you know, something whether you're referencing Ricky Steamboat or somebody way back in the day. And it's just like, okay, that, that makes perfect sense. So... Uh, very, very cool aspect. Um, I have to ask now it's very cool. I'm sure for you guys that Deanna is the impact knockouts champion. You're the world champion. Did you guys ever kind of fathom that before it happened? Or was this like, did you, when you were both in impact, you were like, imagine if I was the world champion, you were the knockouts champ. Did you guys kind of think about that a little bit beforehand? Or was it kind of, Hey, wow, I can't believe this happened. (laughs) For it to happen on the same night is kind of more of the shocking part of like, holy crap, this actually just happened. Uh, It was kind of a very cool moment, especially to ignore each other the whole day, knowing going into the night and what we had to do, just because we're very 
we've loved what we do. And we're very emotional about it, especially for how hard we both work and how hard my wife works. Uh, she's in the new age of the virtuosa and she's just on her new reign and this different journey of showing a different version of her in some way. And she's trying to find that again, back to comics. You're trying to find a different layer to it. So it's just fun for that. But we always made it our goal uh, to be world champions and we wanted to prove ourselves. And I think that's how you do prove yourself is by going somewhere else where something doesn't work out and you go to that new territory and like impact wrestling, they both, they gave us the opportunity for the both of us. And uh, we've done nothing but take the ball and run with it. And especially my wife from day one, she, when she walked in the door and slam anniversary beating Jordan Grace in front of no one to then now just beating Jordan Grace in front of the world at rebellion in Toronto. That was a, that was a cool moment for her too, just because every time she won the title beforehand, wasn't in front of people. It was in front of just a crowd list. It was during COVID era. So it's like, she didn't realize that until we were sitting there the next day. And she's like, I didn't know this. I was like, oh, that's great. I didn't even think of that either. So it's just kind of cool. And uh, it was just kind of fun to like, kind of just sit back later that night and just we took our photos and stuff together. And it was just kind of cool to just not really have to say much, but we were just happy. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That's gotta be a great feeling. And then ta- tell me about what did she tell you exactly when you, uh, the interest of impact came to you basically what what good things did she say like that really stood out to her about impact that she liked that she told you this is a good company to go to the creative freedom uh Mm -hmm. just creatively they just like come to them with the idea and they loved it and again with my vignettes and like this is kind of how i see myself as this mercenary this character of just kind of dark not the gung-ho military guy pushing it down your throat waving the american flag i wanted to go the other route and i've always wanted to do that way and this is something i pitched a long time ago and all those times I was told no actually worked out to benefit me now because I was able to hone in more on who I was into the character. Uh, so it kind of worked. It, uh, everything happens for a reason. Uh, so it's one of those things just to have that creative freedom and to be able to sit there and chat with creative. And that's one of the things she said. She's like, they'll work with you. Just go out and knock it out of the park and they'll continue to work with you. And that's all I try to do. And it's, it's, it's awesome. Impact has been nothing but just open arms and just, different ideas and obviously there's things that they have planned uh in that we can't control but i can actually voice my opinion and be heard which is an awesome and different feeling too where i'm told hey go be you and it's just like okay cool yeah it all balances out like that it's uh no you know cash and creative are the two things that people always talk about and if those all work together you can't ask for a better mix you know (laughs) all right um so Deanna's Italian, I'm Italian. I got to ask, um, what has kind of, um, what Italian, part of the Italian lifestyle is kind of encompassed in your life in it now, now that you're married to one? Uh, not much has changed since growing up because my stepfather's Italian. So, Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you call it gravy or sauce? Oh, I call it sauce still. I saw, I, oh, okay. it's gravy I never did house. gravy. Yeah, it's gravy in our house. So, see i'm like yeah. a chicken parm italian <laughs> so, yeah. matt cardona told me that and i because i was like um i grew up in an italian household like my dad was italian obviously like that but we didn't do a lot of the traditional stuff when it came to like the our italian family side so i'm like mm-hmm. okay i gotta get a little customer and see how different life was so i'm always intrigued by that <laughs> yeah from my dad's side with uh my, my grandmother uh for his mom uh annie it was always fish dinner christmas eve and we kind of do the same thing here. Like D tries to, but then we still get our pasta. Like it just, it's just funny. She just tries to get the inklings of Italian in all the time, which is fine with me. I love Italian food. Uh, you can't go wrong with it. If I could eat pasta every day, I would, um, <laughs> but it's good. And uh, it's just, she's, oh, she, uh, what's the one thing? Uh, uh, Madonna, uh, Madonna me is her one expression. She used it. So the one time, if you actually look at Madonna me, like spelt out, it's Madonna Mia. Oh so Yeah. Every- so every time she says, oh, Madonna Mia, I was like, oh, Madonna Mia, too. And I just, she gets annoyed, but it's just funny because it's just, it's all made up. It's oh, all- yeah. Right. I know. I have a buddy that just says, oh, Madonna, and just leaves it at that. <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> she does the hand gesture sometimes. Oh, man. I was telling somebody, I think it was my Cardona, too. I was like, I was a huge mark for the FBI, even though, like, the majority oh. of them weren't Italian, little Guido was, so. Yeah. That's the funny part. <laughs> Right. All right. Um, I'll close it out with this. Um, you're obviously wrestling PCO this uh weekend here. Um, are you a big horror movie fan? Yes, actually. I'm very much looking forward to seeing the new Evil Dead. I haven't yet. Uh, I'm still waiting to see that. And then what's the other what do you have for me? Oh, let me see. Well, the other question I had is what's your Sorry. favorite monster? Favorite monster? Uh I don't know. Growing up, I love the remake of the blob. 
Uh, yeah. For some reason, the blob, I thought that, uh, what's his name? Uh, he was in uh, Entourage. Uh, Is it Jerry McConnell? Is that him? No. Um, trying to think of Jeremy uh, Dillon, Piven? Uh, something Dylan um is it Matt not Matt Dylan but the, the oh brother. yes his brother though his brother yeah he still had long hair then it was uh it was, I think it was the blob two um uh, or it was the blob or the blob two I forget what it, I don't know I just love the blob I don't know that freaked me out like as a kid but it was also just intriguing I'm like imagine if that happened right that was one of those things yeah definitely if, that, if you consider the blob a monster I don't know I totally do he fits in yeah. that realm absolutely he does yeah jeez and plus he was an X Men too or uh, part of the Brotherhood Evil Brotherhood mutants. yes. There you go. All right, uh, Steve, anything else you want to plug before we go here? Uh, well, Impact uh, on Access this Thursday night, so tune in at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. We got uh, Under Siege coming up this Friday as well, an Impact Plus fight app, and then also we have the Fallout the next day in Under Siege in London, Ontario. So tickets are still available at impacttickets.com. And then, uh, yeah, if you want to follow me, at Steve Macklin on Twitter and Instagram. I don't have that verified on uh, Twitter anymore, but it is my only account. If you have a problem with any other account, please let me know. Uh, and check me out at Pro Wrestling T, Steve Macklin store, as well as Shop Impact Deal, Steve Macklin. And I also, my wrestling buddy's coming out, so keep keep an eye out on that one. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, cool, yes. You guys tune in to Under Siege this weekend, Friday, uh, May 26th. Uh, Steve Macklin will be taking on PCO. Can't miss it. Can't miss- and Deonis taking on Jordan Grace, so how about yes. that? Nope. Fourth time, too. Holy smokes. Match of the year that was when she wrestled against her in it, like during the COVID era, I thought. It was took it stole the show. It stole the year, I think, for that. So really good stuff. So all right, Steve. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely.